This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Oh my god! Groceries! We are doing it! But you gotta eat the booty like groceries. I actually get so many questions about groceries in Japan. How much do they cost? What do they have? Do they have this? So I thought it would take you guys to the grocery store with me, compare different products and prices, especially looking at differences between Japan and California. I actually have like nothing. I have. I have spices. So when I was back home last time in California, I filmed one of my little grocery excursions. I did go to the Walmart Supercenter and I feel like most people don't grocery shop there. I usually kind of don't, but... It's fine. All right, let's go check out the Japanese grocery store and look at some of the differences between California and Japan. And there's my ride. <laughs> Probably one of the biggest differences, hands down, is that you can't keep a lot of food in the house at once for multiple reasons. This is my fridge now, but before I had this tiny little dorm fridge and a lot of my friends also have tiny fridges or the apartment only has like a really small space for a fridge. So I finally got me a big person fridge, but before it wasn't like that. Reason number two, you have to carry everything. For people living in bigger cities like Tokyo, New York, maybe even Paris, you might be used to like carrying all your groceries home. But for somebody coming from California, I'm not used to that. So that's another reason why you can't really bring that much stuff home because you can't carry that much stuff. I usually take my bike, I'll fill up this basket and I have a backpack. Today's a special case though. Uh, I rented a car for the week because I had something to do earlier. So for once in my life, I have a car to go grocery shopping. But usually I take the bike, I don't have much. I tried to take you guys to like a very fair grocery store. I hate when there's like comparisons and they're like oranges to apples. This is like a more realistic one. It's not super expensive, but it has a lot of stuff. So usually I would come here by bike and all you have to do is like put your bike on one of these. It's weight activated and it'll lock the tire. However, it's like not actually locked. Like as soon as you lift the bike up, you can take your bike out. But that's another big comparison. Like nobody steals here, so they don't really need it. <laughs> if you stay like a specific amount of time, it's usually free. But if you stay like a really long time, you have to pay and you'll just like come here put the number of your bike and then pay my next reason why you can't buy a lot of stuff at once the baskets unless you're like at an American store like Costco or something a lot of the baskets are really small and yes you put a basket in the basket <laughs> Now for the next reason why you can't keep many things in your house because they actually expire. This is a big one and I'm still a little traumatized from my last trip in California. I bought some kale when I got there and then three months later towards the end of the trip I was gonna buy some more kale so I could make a salad and my mom was like why would you buy more kale? The kale you bought previously is still good in the fridge. Still good in the fridge. No kale should still be good after three months. And there it was, in the fridge, fully intact, as if I just bought it yesterday. I'm traumatized. Food in Japan actually expires rather quickly, and I'm guessing that's because it's actually food. But especially the bread. That one had me quite shocked. All of the bread actually expires in like two days. So I pretty much never buy bread because it goes bad too fast. One shocking thing you've probably heard of before is that the fruit here is very expensive. But it's not just fruit. Any kind of foreign vegetables are also expensive. <laughs> watermelon is about $14. This cantaloupe is $40 and they're often like wrapped in really nice plastic. They're like gifts. Also, it's so noisy in Japanese grocery stores, which is why I'm going to voice over most of this. <laughs> Everyone's favorite aisle, the ice cream. Um, in Japan, I've yet to see a bucket of ice cream. Probably because humans are not supposed to eat buckets 
of ice cream. They tend to be a lot smaller, however, they have a lot of, like, really good flavors, I think. They're not as exciting, of course, as the American ones who don't care about your health, but they got a lot of good ones. Before we continue with the video, today's video is in collaboration with Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. She just has to always be in the video. So these are both Japanese monthly snack box subscription services. So with Tokyo Treat, you'll get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for like a limited time, like Pepsi and Kit Kat, stuff like that. And with the Sakurako box, you'll receive 20 traditional, authentic, artisan Japanese snack items, including Japanese tea and one special tableware with your box every month. Sakurako helps by partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue and share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for hundreds of years. As you guys know, it's the beginning of spring over here, so actually both of these boxes are Sakura themed. Both of the boxes come with this really cool booklet with a lot of information inside on the snacks, like where they're from, who makes them, the ingredients inside. The Tokyo Treat box is filled with a lot of limited edition snacks that are only available this month. I love peach. Peaches and cream. I've actually never tried this flavor. Mm, I can share. Mm. If you like peaches, you'll love it. Wow, a yogurt peach Fanta. <gasps> Y'all remember the commercial? Wanna, wanna Fanta, Fanta? Don't, don't you wanna? You wanna? This actually tastes like peach pie. Peaches and cream. So I gotta go be getting me, boy. Last time, they had a cookie in this box that was so good, I had to track down the maker and order a giant box. I'm mostly excited to see what kitchenware I got. Ah! It's a little Sakura bowl. This is so cute. Okay, I'm gonna try this one. Ooh, what is this? Is this a cookie? I don't even know what it is. Okay, let's try. Fire. Oh my god, I love that. Oh, that's fire. I must find where it's from. 10 out of 10. Found it. It's an apple cookie from Nagano. <sighs> that's too far. Really great fun options if you want to try a bunch of Japanese snacks and also they make really great gifts as well. I'm gonna have links and all the information down below in the description box. Use my code SUNDAY for $5 off of your first purchase of a Sakurako or Tokyo Treat box. Order by March 31st if you guys want to get these boxes. Now, back to the video. Oh. Obviously, Japan is like famous for ramen, but they're famous for real ramen. So, I actually don't really like the instant ramen that much. You guys know I'm the ramen queen. I prefer Korean ramen for the instant type, but the Japanese one, I don't know, it'd just be a miss. But I think it's a miss because they have real ramen. They don't need this fake junk. We Americans love our snacks, but in Japan, snacks are usually a lot healthier. They're like senbei, which is rice crackers, or nuts, or dried fish. These are dried scallops. This is probably my favorite sweet snack here. It's a brownie, but these brownies are bomb. They're all individually packaged. Try them out. Another major difference we have is the cereal. Definitely the most disappointing thing of everything in the Japanese grocery stores is the cereal aisle. There's like no cereal. It's not a thing here. They don't really eat cereal for breakfast, so that's why there isn't that many options. And the options they do have, they're all those grandma fiber cereals that help you poop. Like, what is this? Fiber sticks, variations of very healthy granola, very plain flake cereal, like <laughs> they're not that great. All right, Japan may not have cereal and snacks, but they do have a lot of other really cool things, like this Krispy Kreme kiosk we just got. Everyone knows Krispy Kreme has the best donuts. Don't argue with me. And now for probably the most impressive thing that Japan has that the US doesn't, and that is bentos. Bentos are literally everywhere, and especially in the grocery stores. These are pre-packaged meals. They are fresh, they're delicious, and they're also really cheap. I love how they have like such a wide variety of stuff. I can get sandwiches or pasta or pizza or traditional Japanese food, okonomiyaki. I believe this is the reason why so many people are okay with having tiny kitchens and also don't really need to learn how to cook. Now everybody in the club eat chips. Everybody in the club eat chips. Man, America, we got a lot of delicious chip flavors. Other than the cereal, the second disappointment for me is definitely the chips. Um, There's no hot Cheetos. They have Cheetos, but they don't taste anything like the American ones at all. These flavors are all whack too. <laughs> Strong steak, pickled plum, umeboshi. These are my absolute favorite potato chips here, the pure potatoes. They taste so real and like so clean. This one is sesame oil. This one, it's a normal one. Probably the most shocking of everything, the chicken. America, what chicken do you know that has a leg that big or a breast that big? This is what they're supposed to look like. Bigger than your head. 
the meat was such a big adjustment, especially the chicken. This whole time I thought Japan just sold party wings, but no, the chicken's not supposed to be that big. I don't know what they're feeding us in America. Also, the ground beef doesn't have that pink, gooey, slimy stuff in it. It's just literally grounded up beef. And it's also not that big here. We really do not have a lot of options for people who are vegan. I feel so bad, like there's not that much stuff. Actually just this year, they started stocking this little section with like vegan meat products. So they have all these like soy meats. I've only tried this one. It wasn't that good, but it wasn't bad. And I think the price is not that bad. Seafood, especially fresh seafood, is so much cheaper here. Like this whole sushi roll is only $3.98, which is like less than $4. Isn't that amazing? And it has like fresh salmon, fresh tuna. I'd also like to mention I have never seen tilapia here. I don't know what a tilapia is. In California, it's the number one fish that I eat here. It doesn't even exist. Is this even a fish, guys? Someone let me know. Checking out is also a very different experience. I think the biggest shock is that they don't have a conveyor belt, which is also another reason why you can't buy so many things. It would be very strange to pull up with like four carts worth of food. You also usually pay by a machine. And you bag your own groceries, making things a lot faster, actually. Ah, yes, the spit machine. Instead of the inconvenience of licking your finger to pull the bags apart, they have a finger licking machine. Oh my God. Japan has so many precautions against COVID, but in my opinion, this is probably like one of the number one things spreading it. <laughs> and yes, we did have this strange device before COVID hit. All right, y'all, so that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot of other things to take into account, like where you are exactly, what type of grocery store you went to. But I just wanted to give you guys like a general idea. If you like the video, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button. It would mean a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Y'all, the video over and I'm just still looking for another one of them dang apple cookies. Oh my god, there's one! Oh, thank god. I love when they give you two. That way you can like share and have someone else try it, but I'm not sharing this. There's ramen in here!